Hi, this is Deanna with Vintage Veneers Decor, and today I'm going to show you how to create a faux grain sack fabric finish on your furniture piece using paint, glaze, and a dark wax. Let me show you what I'm talking about with regard to the grain sack fabric. Uh, you've probably seen this uh, in shabby chic European French type decor. Uh, it's sort of a burlap fabric, uh, it has a bit of a texture to it, and typically you see these, uh, these grain sacks uh, with uh, lines sewn right into uh, the fabric. So that is what I'm going to try to create. I am going to be uh, reupholstering two chairs in that fabric and doing some stenciling on that, uh, and I decided I wanted to do the table uh, in a very similar motif to complement it, so that's what we're going to do. It's a really simple process. Um, the, uh, the materials that you're going to need um, are chalk paint. Uh, in this case, I'm using Autentico Vintage Chalk. Um, you're going to use, um, uh, eventually, uh, the wax. In this case, I'm using the Autentico's Light Brown Wax. Um, and then you're going to use also a glaze. I have this glaze here. This is actually a glaze that you may not find in the stores anymore. I happen to have several cans of it in my garage because we did faux finishing years ago. But it's the uh, very similar to other products that are currently on the market right now. It's a clear glaze that you mix with your paint um, in about two-thirds to one-third consistency of glaze to paint and uh, that enables you to manipulate the paint for some amount of time when it's on the surface. With regard to the chalk paint, I decided to choose two colors in sort of the tan cream uh, uh, palette and that uh, would take out the, the sort of what I'm seeing in in the grain sack fabric. So I chose in this case uh, Autentico's Almond which has some um, sort of grayish brown tones and I also chose the Antique White which kind of has the cream and a little bit of a yellow tone. Um, and then when I use the wax later on um, that's going to the light brown wax is going to uh, be pulling out the details of the grain sack look that we're going to have on this piece. So it's very, very simple to do. In fact, you're going to be shocked at how simple it is um, because the trick to this is this kind of brush. This is a wallpaper application brush. So when you put your uh, wallpaper on and you're smoothing it on your wall, you're usually using this type of brush. It has a very stiff bristles. These happen to be plastic kind of bristles, which are perfect for creating the look that we want. And what we're gonna create is effectively a, a crosshatch look using uh, the glaze uh, in, the, in the chalk paint. So I started this by going with the slightly darker color. I painted it already on my piece, uh, just a solid, just a solid um, finish of the almond chalk paint. Put a couple coats on there and I let that dry. I also did a very light sanding on it to make sure there were no burrs and what have you. Um, the best way to work on this, you notice I don't have the legs on this table. If you can do that, that's great. Or if you can, if you have the legs on it, if you could put it almost like in the middle of the room, it's great. Because what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, we're gonna do the, do the procedure once and then we're going to do a 90 degree turn and do it again. It just makes it a lot easier uh, to achieve the look that we want to achieve. So what I did is I poured a little bit of the glaze. Um, I mixed it first into a coffee can and then I put a little bit of the glaze uh, into a little can and I'm going to now spread it liberally onto my piece. You want to make sure that you get it uh, as evenly on there as possible. Don't worry so much about the look it's really more important to have the quantity of, of, the, uh, of the chalk paint that's mixed with the glaze on here uh, evenly across. You can go in any different direction because ultimately when you put, uh, when you do the crosshatch sort of process, it will erase any lines that you might get on here from your, from your roller. So really you just wanna make sure that the consistency is, is pretty even. So. For the heck of it, I'm gonna put a little bit more on there. Make sure it's on there nice and thick. Great. 
Okay, now here's the fun part, and this is what makes, makes the process. So I'm gonna take my brush, and you wanna kinda go over, in this case it's an oval, so if you've got a square, it, it doesn't matter so much, but I wanna make sure that I get lines consistently across the entire piece, so I'm gonna actually overshoot this a little bit. I'm gonna drag this brush straight through that glazed paint, and I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna do it one more time. Get it all the way across. So you can already see you're starting to get some of the lines in there. You're seeing the almond underneath and the antique white on top. So now, to make it easy, I'm just gonna turn this 90 degrees. Bring my brush again. <clears throat> Start again, I'm going to overshoot, I'm going to come through, go straight towards me, through, straight towards again, straight towards. Okay, now if you like it this in this way, which is just the back and forth one time, you can stop at this point. If your eye likes this, if this looks like the grain sack that you're comparing it to and you're happy with it, that's great, you can stop right there. I actually want a little bit more detail, so I'm gonna turn it a 45 degree, and I'm going to drag this diagonal. This is where you get the cross hatch look. Okay, so now you got the cross hatch look. It's kind of hard to see with the sliding, I, I understand. Apologize about that. And we're going to do it another 90 degrees over, which gives us the other diagonal. I'm going to come this way. Come this way. And time. So step back, take a look at it. Is it what you want? So I personally, I like a lot of detail. So I'm going to go one more time with the checkerboard and now when it goes through I'm gonna do one more this way and as you can tell the glaze is still activated having no problems at all with this process it's just coming right through the paint might be getting a couple burrs in here which I'll get off after the paint is dry but we are we're good to go so there you go so now I've pulled it through multiple times it's it's still a little hard to see with the light shining on it, so I'm going to show you a piece that I did in advance to kind of test this process out. So this actually is, is one that I did, but I also added the wax to at the very end. So hopefully you can see that cross hatch, and when I put the light brown wax on it, it got into the crevices, and of course... Uh, this is after it's been t totally dry, um, but it got into the crevices, and it, even as I wiped it off uh, to keep that lighter tone of the antique white showing, uh, the, the brown wax got into the crevices, which is what's giving it that textured look. So that's the look we're going to go for, and ultimately we'll do that for this piece, but we're going to wait because uh, the next phase on this we'll be putting on the red stripes. Uh, and then um, after it's completely done, after I've stenciled it and everything, that's when I'm going to put the wax on it. Um, so um, we're going to stop here for a moment and we'll come right back and I'll show you how to do the stripes. This is Deanna with Vintage Veneers Decor and I am back um, and I'm going to do the next step in creating a faux grain sack uh, fabric finish on your furniture piece using decorative paint. Um, in the first part of this video, we created a texture finish uh, that mimics sort of the creamy tan part of the grain sack fabric. Um, today, what we're gonna do is the striping part, and let me tell you what we need to accomplish that. Um, first and foremost is a really good painter's tape that will not pull up the finish that we just completed, but also will not allow um, the paint from the striping to bleed through. Um, and so you can find a variety of uh, good painter's tapes online. I happen to choose a three quarter inch one for this project because that is the thickness of the stripe on 
my actual um, fabric that I'm mimicking, but you can use one inch, you can use one and a half, two inches, three inches, whatever works for your project. Um, the other thing uh, I would recommend using, especially if you have a square table, is this uh, square here that will help you with straight lines. In my case, I have an oval, so it's a little more complicated. Uh, you can also use this kind of square that will, will help um, do that. And then, of course, to make sure your lines are even I, uh, apart and what have you, I, I use um, a tape measure as well. Um, in the paint, I decided to go with a, a mix of Authentico Vintage chalk paints uh, that I, I put together to get the closest matches I could to the stripe. Um, I also found a paint pen that I will use for the small stripes that is a pretty pretty close match as well. So, and then I am going to be using a chalk paint brush that has a flat top. Sometimes you can find these, they'll be called stenciling brushes, but uh, in this case Authentico has a uh, chalk brush that happens to have a flat top. And you want the flat top and you'll see why a little bit later because we are going to put these stripes on in a way that we would uh, almost like we were doing stenciling. And then you'll need a piece of uh, paper towel to serve as a blotter uh, for the paint. So, okay, so let me go move on to this. So in order to make this simple, in my case, because the size of my table is such that uh, the grain sack fabric that I'm mimicking is actually uh, perfectly sized for this, I actually followed um, the actual stripes in, in putting down uh, the, the stripe that I'm going to paint. Now I did this ahead of time because it's a little time consuming, uh, but I wanted to show you how, um, how easy it is once you kind of find where your stripe is going to be to then tape it off so that you can uh, actually uh, produce the stripe in paint. So after fiddling with this for a good 20 minutes or so and making sure all of the lines were equal in between here and that we had equal distance there, um, using the uh, grain sack paper as a guide, I put down these two stripes of paint, uh, painter's tape. These will actually be the stripes once they're painted. And so the best way then to achieve that without having to do any further measuring is to Take your painter's tape, and I put on my glasses so I can see everything correctly. You take your painter's tape, and you actually put it right up next to the stripe that you put down, which will uh, serve as your painted stripe. And you want to make sure it's perfectly aligned and straight. Once you have that, I might need to do that. You can go ahead and, with your finger, put it down nice and firm. So, okay, a little bit. As you can see, I put it right next to the other one. So I'll do that on the other side as well. Button it right up against that other one. I'll run a little faster. And so you can see now I've got three stripes here. So the middle stripe, which is this one here, is the actual one that I will pull up. sticky there. This is where the red's going to go and then the other two serve as uh, the basis of sort of the outside edges of that stripe. So I'll just pull that off and I'm going to really work this down and what we want to do is have it as firm as possible, um, being careful uh, that we don't pull up the original paint job there. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and paint that. But before we do that, I'm going to do the other stripe and I'll uh, speed up the video so you don't have to spend too much time waiting for that.
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do the painting of the stripe. Now, in some instances, I would recommend uh, that you use the paint on the base coat first and paint over these stripes before doing your color so as to uh, lessen the likelihood that is gonna bleed. In this case, because I have this special decorative finish, uh, it would be a little hard for me to do that. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, do more of a stenciling technique, which will help um, minimize some of that bleed. So using my flat brush, and I'm dipping it into the paint, I'm going to blot it. I'm going to offload a lot of that paint onto this uh, paper towel. And that will make it less likely to saturate uh, through these lines. And then I'm going to apply the paint almost as if it is a stencil. And in this case, because we're looking for that textured grain sack look, this will come out exactly the way I want it. Um, if you're looking for a nice solid stripe, um, I would go with that first technique that I mentioned that is sealing off the paint with the original base coat color and then taking uh, perhaps a roller or something like a foam roller is probably the best where you can run over the entire area. But in this case, I actually want it to have a little bit of um, sort of a blotchy look because that's the, the grain sack fabric has that look. So you can see, sort of, you can actually see here where I'm sort of tapping. Try to get this up a little further there. Uh, it's kind of a blotchy tapping there. So that's what I want. Okay, so I'm pretty much done here. I'm, as you can see now, I've kind of blotted both of these. And I'm gonna take a quick look at both of them as they dry to see if there's any spots that I've missed. Um, so let me do that real quick. I'm seeing a little bit here on the edge. And a couple areas here. I'm gonna do a little bit more. This edge looks good. That one, maybe a little bit here. All right, great. So, pretty simple. Um, I like to pretty quickly take my paint painter's tape off so as not to uh, allow the paint to dry and potentially uh, damage um, the other base the base coat on here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. I have incidentally a tiny little bit of the base coat came off on this edge but that's okay because I want this table distressed anyway so it just actually has kind of been keeping with the original look. So I'm taking that off. So let me do this other one kind of in front of you so you can see I'm taking this off. Okay. 
Okay, I'm stuck here. There we go. Oops, there we go. I'm showing you. Okay, so there we go. So here you here you have it. You got your two stripes. You can see there's a couple areas where it's not completely solid, and that's okay. That's exactly what I want. I want it to look a little bit uh, uh, see-through because that's what the grain sack uh, stripes look like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this completely dry, uh, and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to put the smaller um, lines uh, for the stripe uh, in with a paint pen, and I'll show you that next. Okay, we're back. Um, and now what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be adding the pinstripe uh, that's part of this grain sack fabric design to our faux grain sack fabric finish on our furniture piece uh, using a paint pen. Um, I'm using the paint pen because it has a nice thin tip. It's easy uh, to manipulate. You can use a small artist brush with the paint that you use for the main stripe uh, if you're not able to find a good match but I feel this is a fairly good match and it gives me a little bit more control so that's what I'm going to use. The other thing I'm going to use uh, to accomplish this is a straight edge um, and you want to take a straight edge whether it's just uh, a single long big ruler that is I like to use metal because it provides a really good straight edge, but you can use plastic or you can use wood as well if you do a yardstick or something. I'm also, in this case, happen to be using a square. Um, this is particularly useful if you have a, a rectangular or square piece, but in my case, uh, I'm just using it generally um, because that's what I have here at the workshop. Um, you'll notice on the green sack fabric that this pinstripe is about a quarter of an inch away from the main stripe. So that is what I'm mimicking here. I've already taped this up to make it go a little faster for you. But what I did is I actually went just a hair beyond the quarter inch so that we can take into account um, uh, the, uh, the width of the paint pen, uh, the paint pen tip. So what you're gonna to wanna to do here, it's gonna be a little hard to see this, I'll see if I can try to move a little closer here, is you're going to wanna make sure it's taped down evenly all the way along and you're gonna to wanna to hold it so it doesn't slip. And you wanna go straight on the edge uh, of, your, um, of your straight edge here and you're just gonna, in one stroke, run down the straight edge. Be careful not to pick up your pen because when you put it back down, you'll see exactly where uh, that pen is. Now be careful, what I just did on the end here is I ran over that straight edge and I, and I went off the, a little bit to the right. I can clean that off uh, while it's drying. I'll fix that, clean that off a little later, and, and if I don't get all of it, I'll take a tiny little bit of a sandpaper and do that. Oh, there, there it goes, it's all off. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up and undo it. You'll see already that I have the the pinstripe perfectly on. So you can barely see it, see? There you go, pinstripe. So that worked out well. Now, I happen to mark the other things already just to make it a little easier for us. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do this again. And I'm gonna go do the rest of this pinstripes and you can watch, I'll speed up the video so that uh, it goes a little bit more quickly for you. Okay, so now you can see I have the pinstripe on either side of the large stripe. See it all there? I'm going to, a little bit later, I'm gonna bring that down here, but for purposes of showing you, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And 
you can see it it mimics very closely the grain sack right there so there you go that's how you make uh, the grain sack look so the next stage that we're going to do on this uh, is uh, to add a stencil and I'm going to do this in a different uh, video but this will go here and I'm going to uh, do a stencil in black on this and then when I'm completely done that is when I'm going to add my my wax and I had showed you before and I'll show you the uh, final outcome again um, when you add the brown wax you are able to then see better the crosshatch pattern that we used earlier in this uh, video to make it appear as if it was an actual fabric. Um, wax is always last and so I'm gonna do that in my next video after I complete the stenciling on this grain sack. But for now you can see how uh, we've created a grain sack uh, look um, uh, using decorative paint on a piece of furniture. Thanks for watching.